Hi, I'm Sherry McConnell from Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And we are here for the Quilting Life podcast. This episode is airing November 16th, and we are taping it just a little bit early so that we can get a jump start on the month with Thanksgiving coming up at the end. Yes, Thanksgiving, you guys. <laughs> I'm like dreaming of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Mom always, we have Thanksgiving with you this year. Yes, looking and forward to that. <laughs> yes, and though it will be a small group of us, um, we're really excited. So yeah. Uh, yeah, lots of mashed potatoes. Mom makes a great green bean casserole. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll, um, it'll be nice because um, last year we were actually driving home from California in a snowstorm. Oh, yeah. On Thanksgiving. Which and is so strange, but you made it home. We so. made it home. We were grateful to have Thanksgiving with um, our son's girlfriend's family. and But I did miss cooking, so yeah, it'll be good. Okay. okay. <laughs> so so we have a lot of listener questions again today. And if we don't get to yours, I will get to them next. They, they kind of come in spurts. We get several questions and then um, a couple weeks later we get more. So we're just going to dive right into the listener questions. Oh, actually, first Chelsea's going to tell us about the quilts. I was about to butt in, okay. but, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, so I have a couple quilts to share with you today. On the wall today is one of my quilt patterns called Star Crossed. It's a bigger block quilt. It's a lot of fun to make just traditional piecing methods, and it's fat quarter friendly, so that's a lot of fun. It measures 80 by 80, um, and this was actually made using our summer suite collection. So lots of summer vibes from this one. And then the quilt on the table was actually made using our Harper's Garden collection. It's called Monarch. And it's just a simple butterfly um, quilt. Uh, I love this one so much because it's layer cake friendly. I, I really love layer cake quilts. Uh, so this one's a lot of fun. So we'll have... Um, these linked uh, on the podcast. And so, yeah, those are the quilts today. Yeah, <laughs> I love them both. It was fun. I, we didn't talk, and so it was fun to see her carry them in. And I thought, oh, I haven't seen the butterfly quilt yeah. in a while. It's such a fun one. I really yeah. like it. Yeah, I had so. to pull this one out. It's uh, in my quilt basket. So yeah. that was fun for me, too. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so what's new with us recently? Um you have anything new that you're working on? I've well, been... Well, <laughs> I just... What I showed you when you got here, I just yes. finished my blockheads quilt. <laughs> so we are actually... I'm actually like 13 weeks ahead, but I just wanted to get it done before the holidays since I have all the patterns. So I'm in the process of sewing those blocks together. And it was funny because I finished all of the remaining blocks and then I had to go take photographs for them for my blog post that will be upcoming. And so it, it really took quite a while because I had to take individual pictures and then pictures with the blocks up to that point and keep it all straight. And You are so organized. So, But now I'm sewing them into rows and that's that's what's new with me. Yeah, as soon as I got here, she's like, I have to show you something, which is like every time. And yeah, it was it's really pretty, you guys. I can't wait for you guys to see all of her blocks that she's made but yeah you have all your rows together and yeah they they look really pretty and I love that like she mixed a lot of our fabric lines together um that was really cool to see like how well they all mesh together yeah so um and for sashing I used a, a our low volume print from walkabout oh yeah I had saved just a couple yards of just it. Just enough. So it was really fun to be able to use that. Yeah. Other than that, I did finish two Christmas quilts this week too. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, well, I came out with two new fall patterns uh, that I shared on my social media. So those are out and listed. And I just, um, I've been doing the social lights so along with Fat Quarter Shop. Um, that's been fun. And then I'm actually... Uh, working on new fabric design. So lots yeah. of computer work for me right now. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the new in my life right now. Yeah. And I think we're both doing patterns for 
our collection that we'll be sharing in March too. Yes, We're yeah, both we kind of yeah starting to get those onto paper and into the computer. So yeah, the process is always so like strange to think about because we're we're like ahead but then we're like working with stuff that's you know that we have now so it's always a kind of a strange timeline but yeah just all part of the process <laughs> yeah I thought uh, well maybe we can pop up a couple pictures of my Christmas quilts too because one of them's a new pattern and one of them's an old pattern that I well not a very old pattern Actually, it's a Happy Days pattern that I really redid in Christmas, but we can pop up those pictures and and put links to those patterns, yeah. too. So, okay. All right. I think that's what we're working on now, and we'll just go to the listener questions. Let's dive in. Okay. Question number one. What is the best way to hang miniature quilts on the wall? I see a lot of people just using straight pins and wondered if you had a way that you do it. And this is a really great question because I actually have a way that I do it. In fact, there's a video that I've shared to show you how I fix the back of my mini quilts and use a dowel and hang them on nails. But in our old house, I had actually hung some with pins. And I was actually shocked when we moved. I took those down and even it's been a year now and some of those quilts, there are still holes in the quilt. So I just want to say, really think before you put a pin, a hole, you know, put a push pin yeah. through your quilt because that hole might never go away. Yeah. If you don't care about it, then, and you're, and you're just making the mini for a decoration and it doesn't bother you, then push pins are fine. But yeah, I was going to say that because uh, my advice was a push pin because a lot of the times people make the mini so they can hang them to decorate on the wall in their sewing room. Right. Which is, yeah, that's what they're going to use them for. But right. yeah, you will have, I mean, especially with them hanging so right so long on the wall. So my, yeah, push pins, but yeah. you will have holes and holes in your walls. Yeah. If you ever want to switch things up, there's going to be a lot of holes in the walls. <laughs> so, but... Yeah, and I think we can put a link to the video that I think it's called How to Hang a Mini Quilt. So, and it'll give you another option. And if, if you want to keep using pins, that, that's an option too. So, okay, question okay. number two. Now that I've cut up my scraps into different sizes, I need ideas, I, ideas, ideas on what I can use them for, especially the one and a half inch squares. I have a mishmash of fabric scraps, so nothing really that goes together. I only have a few pieces of specific lines, but would never have enough of the same line to make a full quilt. I'd love to do a postage stamp quilt, but not sure how to do it with small individual squares. That's a lot of tiny squares to sew with. (laughs) Yeah. That is a lot of tiny squares. Um, I feel like definitely that's what's fun about a scrappy quilt. They don't have to be Right. Um, from the same fabric line or even fabric lines that perfectly match together. That is my favorite part is diving into your bin and making something that um, comes comes together with different fabrics. It, honestly, it will turn out really pretty. Like that's the whole, that's what I love about Scrappy. Yeah. So I agree. I would suggest if you have a lot of one and a half inch squares, I would suggest sewing them into four patches or nine patches Mm -hmm. and then using them later when you get a big group of them. Um, It's easy to to just set a pile of those squares next to your sewing machine and use them before and after other sewing. And before you know it, you'll have lots of four patches and nine patches to make a, a scrap quilt with. Yeah, I really love that idea. Like every time you sit down to sew, because you may not sew every day, but every time you sit down to sew, have those on a little project board and be like, you know, I'm going to sew a couple four patches today. And every time you sew, just sew one or sew two. And yeah, by the end, you have a beautiful array of four patches, nine patches to make something bigger. Yeah, that was a, a great question. Okay, number three, and I've actually had this kind of in different forms from several different people. And so this one kind of sums up all of them. Why do designers design square quilts? And 
along with that, other people have asked, you know, how do I use a square quilt? Why, why is your pattern square? It, that doesn't fit on a bed. And I think this is a great question. And I think Chelsea and I both have some fun ideas to share about this. Yeah. So what's funny is both of these quilts that I'm sharing today are square quilts. <laughs> uh, so that's perfect for this question. Uh, you know, all quilts that you make don't necessarily have to be for a bed, you know, because, you know, if you have a twin size bed or something, you know, you'd obviously have different dimensions of a quilt. But um, I we hang our quilts on walls. I fold them up and put them on a ladder or in a basket. And honestly, um, you know, there you don't need a specific size of quilt for just something to have on the couch for you to use when you're watching a movie or um, anything like that. So I love square quilts. I love them, but I, yeah, I have seen this question before and, um, yeah, I totally get it. Cause a lot of times like people are just making quilts for their beds. So, uh, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's, you know, when I, when we do patterns for a new fabric collection, I try to make sure that I have a couple of rectangular quilts Mm -hmm. and a couple of square quilts. I, I do like square quilts for all the reasons Chelsea mentioned. They're great for ladders. They're great for the wall. They're great for just throwing over a couch. They also look really great diagonally on a rectangular table. A square quilt yeah. is perfect for using as a tablecloth even. Or yeah. a picnic quilt is great to have square. Yeah. And then if you really want it for a bed, you can always add just blocks. add blocks or add borders. Yeah or both so that is so funny I was just about to mention that um I've had people email me and say oh but I need to make this you know for my granddaughter's bed and and you know you just can you know if you have extra fabric or if there's a way you can get extra fabric that maybe matches that or buy extra you know when you're buying the pattern you can always make extra blocks and right add borders to make it uh the size that you need for a specific project yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that'll get yeah, hopefully that give you helps. some inspiration. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want to read it? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Okay. So um I don't know if you've addressed this topic already, but I'm wondering which white goes best with your fabrics. And if you know what white goes best with fig tree, sweet water, three sisters, and Minikin Simpson fabrics. Also, I've heard that Moda White 97 is a prepared for dye fabric and that it may pick up colors when washed. Do you have any experience with it and do you recommend using it? Okay, so I'm going to start off because I know the answer to the first two. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bella Ivory 990060, is that the Bella Solid color? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is what matches our specific background color for all of our fabric lines except our upcoming fabric line which is a yeah. surprise but also <clears throat> i feel like our happy days collection which will be in shops in february yeah is a little lighter and brighter and yeah looks i actually almost think it looks better with the bella 200 the mm-hmm. off white it'll still work i actually made all my my patterns with the 60 Oh, but then okay. afterwards, I yeah, made me too. a couple of Christmas quilts, and with one of them, I used the 200, and I really liked it. And I thought, wow, I could have made all of those other patterns with the 200. So yeah. if you like a wider look, you c- you can use the 200 with our fabrics. We we did some quilts with 200 for with summer sweet too yeah and it looked great so. yeah i was gonna say that if you're worried about it don't worry we've already both made quilts with bella 200 with our fabrics and it's not too stark of a contrast right um i've made uh multiple quilts i just made a balboa i just used it with balboa fabrics i just released a pattern um, I used the Bella 200 with my all American pattern. It's really, really pretty. So if you're a lot of people like this warmer look and we love the warmer look, it's very, very pretty. But yeah, if you're looking for something a little, um, brighter that pops just a bit more, uh, the Bella 200 works great. Yeah. I think it's kind of yeah. 
your choice, really. They both look good. Yeah. So, but Happy Days, I feel like, is... It's a little bit brighter. A little bit, yeah. So, I will say this, though. Fig Tree does use the Bella Ivory. Um, right. In her recent fabric lines, I know that's what she's used as a background. I don't know the specifics on uh, these other designers. I don't know if you do. Yeah, but... I, I kind of do. Um, well, I was just going to say, with Fig Tree... Her really old collections, I feel like, go best with Bella Snow. Yeah. But then she lightened it up a bit, and then then uh, the Bella Ivory. And her most recent collections have been uh, the Shirtings one, is the one I'm thinking of. Would probably work with 200 as well. Yeah. Okay, and then Sweetwater, there's... Uh, I, I've sewn a lot with their fabrics, and I feel like there's this kind of like ours It. Depends on the collection, but you can go with the uh, Ivory, the Bella 60 or the Bella 200 um, with theirs. Three Sisters, I haven't sewn with that for a while, but I kind of feel like it's more of an Ivory. And then Minnick and Simpson fabrics go great with the Bella Ivory. Yeah. I have used Minnick and Simpson backgrounds and interchanged them with backgrounds from our collection. Oh, and they work really well. They work great. I, I've used them together with ours for a lot of my patriotic oh, quotes. Awesome. So, yeah. So, and then the last part of the question, I've heard that too. I used to use uh, the 97 a lot until I heard that and I got scared. And that's when I switched over to the 200, which I actually like a little bit better anyway. But that being said, I've never had any of those quilts that I made with the 97 pick up any colors when I washed it. So Oh, okay. So. That's good to know, though, because, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would be kind of afraid of that, too. Yeah. I used 97. Yeah. I used 97 a lot when I was sewing with a lot of Bonnie and Camille fabrics. Oh, okay. That was my go-to background, and uh, I never had any problems. Oh. So, yeah. That was a good question. So, yes, thank you for that. Okay, number five. <laughs> yes. Okay. I uh, love listening to your podcast. I am new to quilting and have been seeing the term trunk shows. What does that mean? And the, the great question, uh, a trunk show is where a quilter will give a presentation and share quilts that she has made. Oftentimes a lecture will go along with it on a certain topic or maybe the quilt maker's journey. And they are just commonly referred to as trunk shows. I think that kind of probably goes back to quilters storing their quilts in trunks and, yeah. and sharing what they had. So, so that's what a trunk show is. It's just a sharing of quilts, usually in a public setting i feel like people have been doing them virtual yeah. lately too so and via zoom trunk shows i've had emails from some quilt guilds asking if, if things don't get better would i consider doing a zoom trunk yeah. show so yeah it's just a sharing of quilts yeah i uh i that's a great question because i used to wonder the same thing when my mom would talk about, you know, I'm do I have a trunk show this weekend. And, um, that was when I was, um, a little bit younger, but, uh, it was fun because I got to participate in a trunk show. Well, two with you now, uh, when we went with Quilter's Attic to their retreat and then up in, um, Logan. And yeah, it was really fun. Cause I got to hear my mom share stories that, um, I hadn't really heard before. So, I mean, I knew the gist of them, but, um, yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was a fun experience and um, a lot of fun. So Yeah, so great question. Keep, keep those questions coming in. No question is... Yes, please. Because keep... <laughs> we were all a beginner one time. So, And the same oh, listener had a second, second question. One. Yeah, does ripping out seams weaken the fabric? As you can imagine, I'm getting quite good at seam ripping, but that can't be good for the fabric. And uh, both of these questions were from Mickey in Wisconsin. She said, thank you for all you are doing. So I do a lot of seam ripping too. I feel like, you know, you should look at the fabric and make sure it hasn't torn. But I feel like I rip out seams all the time and use the, reuse that same piece of fabric. Don't, do you? Yes. I actually, okay. I loved this question because 
I have uh, had many moments with my good friend, the seam ripper, <laughs> and um, totally relatable question because, yeah, do that a lot. Uh, no, fabric is resilient. I was going to agree with you. Um, I definitely like when I start seam ripping, I'm always very careful, but it's kind of like a methodical thing after right. a while. So you're just kind of going with it. But yeah, I just always check too that like there's no tears in the fabric. Right. Fabric will just sew right back up. It's totally resilient. It's tough. Like, yeah, I just try to be mindful of my process. And uh, yeah, it'll stitch right back together, guys. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah. wonderful. Um, I, when I've done some paper piecing, uh, foundation paper piecing, I've noticed if I have to, and I've lowered, you know, shortened my stitch length, it's a lot harder on it when you rip that out. So yes. sometimes I'll redo that if I've had to take. Yeah. And I mean, you might out. have some frayed fabric, obviously, like frayed edges, obviously, which I mean, you don't want to have, but um, yeah, I feel like it's, you'll be fine. Yeah. I've had to seam rip things like more than once before, like the same thing, which is right. super frustrating. Uh, yeah. That's almost like my moment where I'm like, okay, you need to stop and go to bed. But um, yeah. no, I think it's, I don't think you can do too much damage. I don't know. I've especially torn some stuff apart. Yeah. Especially if it's in the seam allowance, it's going to be okay. Yeah. The only thing I would worry about is if you're doing that and the edges are on the bias and the fabric's really getting stretched yes. out of shape, then I might replace it Yeah. with the stretching. And and it would be more because of the stretching than the actual yeah. ripping out of the stitches. Yeah. So that was a great question. Okay. Okay, so, oh, and I loved this one. Tips for applying binding solely by machine. No hand stitching. I have arthritis in my hands and am unable to stitch the back on by hand. I often struggle to make it look neat and clean on the back when I stitch in the ditch on the top. Is there a specific width to cut your binding that will make it look nicer? I use two and a half inch, but recently switched to two in a quarter and that has helped a bit but still every so often around the quilt usually a mini quilt or a wall hanging in my case there is a spot where it barely catches the binding on the back or it catches far too much is it possibly a result of pulling it too tightly or loosely from the front to back um i thought this was a great question i just stitched um some binding on a quilt all by machine uh Oh, you did? I did. Okay. I did. Uh, I can't talk about that quilt right, right. now. Dang it. Right. <laughs> but, but, um, but you can talk about doing your yeah. experience with the binding. So um, there's, to me, this method takes practice, obviously. I do the two and a quarter still, even though I machine stitch it. I didn't change it to two and a half. For me, the stitch in a ditch method is seriously just practice and being mindful. And honestly, as I keep going, it just, it, it gets better as it goes. Even when I started this, this last time it, I was like, Oh, I haven't done this in a while, but there is a tutorial on our friends, um, Vanessa of Lella Boutique on her blog. You can find it on her highlights on her Instagram. And, and we can link to it and we can link to notes. it. Yeah, she uses glue and what she does. So my mom shared this tip a long time ago. It helps for me if you iron your binding out after you stitch it on the front, iron it all around the quilt. And then she uses a method with glue. And that way all the binding is down and the sewing is much, much easier because you'll find if the binding isn't down and you're trying to hold it down, you might get little waves in it. You mm -hmm. might catch um um you just might catch it in a wrong spot and stitching in the ditch might not you know work as seamlessly as you're hoping it would so her tutorial really kind of gives you peace of mind when you're using the glue because everything's set everything's down you're not worrying about pulling that fabric a little too far over or too little and then it's already ready for you to go so we'll link to that it's a great tutorial super quick and easy i it was kind of um it's daunting using new methods or like using glue but it's so easy and so quick so yeah 
Yeah, I I agree. That's that method, like any other method, takes practice. Yes. And I've actually never done an entire quilt. I've done binding on bags that using that method. And sometimes I'm not super happy with that and I'll pick it out and sew it by hand. But I feel like like Chelsea said, if you just practice, you'll get better. And the other thing I thought of is that making sure that your quarter inch seam is super accurate when yes. you're first sewing the binding on will help when you're machine stitching it again to attach it. Because if that seam is straight, you won't have any yep. up and down where it might catch differently. Yeah. And that's that's like where it helps. Like those two things go hand in hand. If you're making sure that that is like you have a really, um, I mean, as per- perfect, I say the word perfect, but quarter inch and you ha- you use that method to glue it down, it's already there right. and you're just focusing on keeping that in line and um, it won't catch that that other side and because you don't want to see stitches through the binding on the front that um, right. you don't want to see that. So yeah, yeah, it really does. It takes a little bit of practice and Vanessa yeah. even talks about that in her tutorial. You know, she's like you, this is something that you might have to work on um, a little bit, but it's a lot faster <laughs> um, yeah. when you do it that way. The reason I did this last one is um, I was kind of on a time crunch and um, it's a great method if it's something you've been um, using often. So, and it was a smaller quilt. So honestly, it was like boom, boom, boom. And I was done. Right. But I do enjoy a good, uh, hand stitching binding and I know mom does, but yeah. this was a great question and that tutorial will really, really help a lot. Yeah. And maybe use that method to practice on things that you're going to donate to charity yeah, or like just a mini... so you get better or for baby quilts, just decide yeah. every time I make a baby quilt, I'm going to do the machine binding and that way I can get the practice on it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, All that right. about wraps it up for this episode, but we did have a really fun, I got an email from a listener viewer who had a comment from episode 12. And so I just thought instead of sharing an Apple review or anything like that yeah. at the end, we would just read what she said because she sent in this really interesting little um, yeah, it was really sweet. Yeah. So she said, I have a comment about your most recent episode number. So she sent this in after episode 12. One of your listeners asked if you have a conversation with quilt recipients so they know the value of the quilt. Chelsea commented that including a note with care instructions may be advisable. This got me thinking about the lovely note my aunt included with the quilt she gave me and my husband on our our wedding day, which was just as beautiful as the note. I'm not sure if she got this from another source or created it all on her own, but this is what she said. Quote, a quilt is like a marriage. It will last a lifetime if cared for. A quilt is made of lots of pieces, bright and cheery, dark or sad, with a background of everyday ho-hum like life. A quilt has lots of mistakes in the construction. None are too noticeable in the overall pattern like life. A quill is held together by stitches, and each is a wish for your happiness. End quote. I felt like her note made the quilt even more valuable. I just wanted to share her quote so that you may hopefully share it with others as a tip to your listeners when gifting a quilt. It's often not about the finished product for the quilter. A lot of thought goes into the pattern, the fabrics, and every stitch is a thought about the person who will receive it. If the recipient knows how much care was put into it and how often the quilter thought of them as they created it, hopefully they will cherish it and always feel the love the quilter had for the person each time they use or see the quilt. Um, And that's from Cindy. That was so sweet. Really? Yeah. Thank you so much for sending that in. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cindy. I thought that was a great way to end our episode. So, yeah. Okay, so thank you so much if you are watching on YouTube or listening in on your favorite uh, subscriber. We really appreciate it. We appreciate your comments and reviews and just so glad that uh, you're with us. So yeah, and our next episode will air on Monday, November 30th. Yes. So Ah, after after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yes, (laughs) and it is going to be a special Christmas episode. Yes, get ready. (laughs) 
So <laughs> my favorite holiday. Yes. So <laughs> thank you so much for stopping by.